evening YouTube, Mark Fahey here with a tag video. Um, I want to know what is your favorite left card reach. For those people who don't know what a left card reach is, a left card reach is actually a card reach that fits inside a Atari, Atari, 8-bit home computer, uh, be it an XL, XE, or a 400, Atari 400, Atari 800, Atari um, XL, XE system. Um, basically, what is your favorite left cartridge or your favorite Atari 8 bit game cartridge? Not the 2600, not the 5200, but the Atari 8 bit computer, home computer line. And uh, is it Miss Pac Man? Or is it Pac Man? Or is it Jungle Hunt? Or is it Centipede? Or is it Kicks? Or is it something entirely different? Let me know, show some gameplay footage, and uh, I'll be happy to check that out and uh, perhaps respond to it as well. And if you don't, well, you don't. Uh, let's go check out some game footage. Uh. Okay. Berserk, um, one of the better uh, conversions of this game. I, I really like this. Uh, this 8-bit version actually has everything that the, uh, this, the game is supposed to have. It has Evil Auto, it has digitized speech, and I must say this truly is one of my uh, favorite versions of uh, favorite games on Atari 8-bit home computer systems. And now let's move on to uh, I die, of course, but let's move on to another one. This is uh, another game that I'm very fond of, and that is actually Donkey Kong, the arcade uh, game. And uh, the funny thing about this uh, game is actually that it's uh, that it's uh, how do you say that? a mirror image of the arcade game because um, in the arcade game actually Donkey Kong is supposed to be on the other side of the screen. Here it's uh, here the, the, the monkey is on the right side of the screen, on the right top side, and on the arcade version it's on the left side. And also a lot of other uh, games, I believe, on the Coleco Vision, Donkey Kong is also on this side of the screen. And it probably had something to do with the fact that the resolution of the uh, TV screen, uh, the resolution on this uh, on this game is a bit uh, lower than the original arcade game because it was a vertical monitor, I believe. But uh, but yeah, this is uh, this is quite a good version, and uh, uh, let's try again. Okay, so here we have Mario jumping the barrels again. And uh, this is quite a bit faster than the uh, Commodore 64, oops, Commodore 64 version. Uh, but all in all, a very good version of the game, and I think a must-have if you own an Atari 8-bit uh, home computer system. Um, yeah, people owning an Atari 5200 will probably recognize this because this is pretty much the same game. Uh, beat with better joysticks because the uh, Atari 8-bit computer, home computer line just uses a regular 9-pin uh, joysticks. They're also compatible with Commodore 64, the MSX, and a lot of other 8-bit home computer systems. And uh, yeah, this is truly a, a favorite of mine, Gyrus, and uh, it's been uh, it's it's by Parker Bros, and it's a great uh, space shooter. Uh, basically, it's Galaga, but then with the screen wrapped around in some sort of 3D, almost 3D-like, uh, uh, yeah, screen. <laughs> um, the thing is that the music in this is great. It's uh, it's actually a, a song or a, what is it? A, a musical a musical composition by Bach, uh, but then sped up with uh, some extra. Uh, rock elements in there. Um, I actually prefer the Commodore 64 version of this because uh, I do think that the Atari is actually capable of producing something better and uh, I think the uh, what lets the, the, the game a bit down is actually the resolution of the, of the alien spaceships and the informations. Um, but all in all a very cool uh, game and if you 
are not playing it from cartridge, but if you are loading it from, uh, from disk, uh, remember to press the option key when you switch on the machine, because this, only, this will only function with uh, basic switched off. And you switch off the basic ROM in uh, the Atari 800 uh, or 130XE by depressing the option key when turning on the machine. And yeah, it's just it's just me, you know, playing a, a couple of rounds. I'm not trying to to uh, to beat it or anything, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna change state. I mean, this is very very similar to uh, to a lot of other. Uh, with these uh, arcade ports, pretty much uh, very similar to the uh, Atari, uh, what is it, to the Commodore 64 version. And uh, I think, it, I, I think in, a, in some ways it's actually a bit easier than the Commodore 64 version. Uh, but I do like the Commodore 64 version a bit more. Um, this version has um, I don't know, the, the Commodore 64 version, at least my version, the PAL version, has very flickering sprites. And uh, this version has very solid sprites. Uh, and they seem to be one color, almost one, name. They, they are one color. Whereas on the Commodore 64, these, uh, the, the aliens actually are consistent uh, of uh, multicolor sprites. So that's, this really makes the game a bit basic. Also, the uh, the other, the other alien bits are more or less just a single color. So, and that's kind of a letdown in this uh, in this sport, but uh, but still, mm -hmm. a great must-have game if you uh, if you own an Atari 8-bit system. It's all there, and uh, yeah, I mean nothing beats the arcade version though. That is just awesome. I would, I would love to have that have an arcade cabinet with gyrus. And then another one of my favorites, and that's Centipede. And um, this is an okay port. Um, actually, my favorite Centipede port probably is the quick original one. That is fast, nasty, and mean. Uh, and, well, this is a, this is a good version, uh, but <coughs> I think I prefer the quick version. ColecoVision version, and actually the Atari 2600 version. The uh, Atari 2600 version basically has it all. And uh, of course, yeah, the graphics are very minimalistic on it, but, uh, and your, and your uh, what is it, your spaceship is just uh, a blob, a square, but yeah. And then another favorite of mine, which, uh, uh, yeah, which is just a must-have on any 8-bit system, and that is this version of Pac-Man, and it is Miss Pac-Man. And um, it is very close to the uh, Commodore 64 version of it, uh, but it has a different sprite, and it, l it uses a lower resolution screen, I believe. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the arcade colors are there, uh, the sound is there, the ghosts and the ghost patterns are pretty much there, and uh, it's a very, very cool version. And it plays, uh, oops, and it plays very nicely. And uh, yeah, I remember playing this in the arcade, and uh, I used to be pretty good at it, but that's like uh, <laughs> a zillion times, a zillion time ago. Uh, I believe in 1993, I actually was pretty good, and I was able to uh, to last quite long on a quarter. I played it in uh, the Arnold Fenton, um, Missouri, like very close to, uh, to St. Louis, but the Arnold Fenton uh, laundromat, and, uh, and they had this machine standing in the uh, washing uh, washing machine, what well, is in the washroom, and uh, I used to play this when I was waiting for my laundry to get uh, to finish. So yeah, very cool version. And uh, it suffers a bit from sprite flickering. Not sure why, but uh, I mean, yeah, I think there's some raster problems like that. Okay, and then we have the first version of it, and that's Pac Man. And Pac Man on the Atari 8 bit home computer system is this is a pi pixel identical version 
to the uh, Commodore 64 version. And uh, it plays a bit faster than the Commodore 64 version, perhaps because the uh, CPU clock on the Atari is a bit faster than the Commodore 64 CPU. Basically, both systems use uh, the same CPU. And uh, the screen is a bit squashed. I mean, if you compare it to the uh, if you compare it to the arcade board layout, uh, it's the same but squashed because the arcade uh, has more of a vertical monitor, uh, whereas this is a more uh, squashed version of uh, of the game. Uh, but still, a very good port. And oops, it's. Uh, Everything is there. Uh, the intermissions, uh, yeah, the scoring system is the same, uh, and this definitely is better than the 2600 version. Uh, Atari 5200 version pretty much is the same. This version is a lot more playable than the Atari uh, 5200 version. I mean, the Atari 5200 never came out uh, in, uh, in PAL. Uh, country, uh, but from what I heard is that the uh, joysticks of the Atari 5200 console are analog and they're not self-centering and uh, they were a mess. They were, they truly were a mess. So, and this little bugger is gobbling, gobbling up all these uh, pills, power pallets and pills. This is actually uh, more. I find this more difficult than the uh, than the uh, Miss Pac-Man version, probably because uh, I mean the maze doesn't change at all. You know, I mean it's you're you're basically stuck with uh, with the same maze, and uh, the ghosts go about their business in a slightly altered state every every round. Uh, they get a bit faster, you get a bit faster, but basically the, the, the gameplay, the, the game screen stays the same. And for some reason I find that uh, a bit more tough to deal with than the, uh, than the uh, Miss Pac-Man game, because there the, uh, the grid changes and you have uh, many different um, mazes, and for some reason uh, changing over the maze really uh, keeps my attention and this it's, it's, it's tough to concentrate on the same maze and just um, also the first part of the game uh, when, when, the, when everything moves relatively slowly I find that actually um, more difficult than when the game speeds up um, basically because you have more time to think and um, Pac-Man is is really a game about being in the zone, getting in the zone, and uh, yeah, uh, just trying to be one with the little little uh, Pac-Man character on the screen, and just go on reflexes, basically. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if I if I think consciously about what I'm doing in Pac-Man, then I just basically lose, and if I if I just, you know, am one with the Pac-Man, then it's basically uh, the best, the best way to play it for me. So, and 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 if if the game plays relatively slowly at the first stages, there's just too much time to think, and uh, I I mustn't think, at least not in Pac-Man. And uh, whoops. Yeah, it's a cool game. And then you die. Well, yeah, I mean, everybody, everybody will probably know Pac-Man. I mean, if you don't know Pac-Man, I don't think. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think I think every. I mean, that, that's 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 the the crazy thing about this uh, about this game. I mean, uh, I think even grannies know what Pac-Man is, you know, everybody knows Pac-Man, everybody knows Tetris, I mean, there's just, 
these games that everybody knows, and Pac-Man is just one of them. Okay, let's try another game. And this is also one of my favorites, and that is Kix. Uh, I played the Commodore 64 version quite a bit. There's even a, a version out there for the Game Boy. Um, basically, you have to, uh, to draw geometrical shapes and fill, and they, those will get filled in with a special paint. And you have two speeds, you have a fast speed and a slow speed, and uh, you have to have a certain area um, filled, and then you get on, you can move on uh, to another uh, level. And uh, the thing is that you uh, should not get in contact with those uh, sticks that are just uh, moving about the screen, and there's also other critters moving around the lines that you draw. and. Uh, yeah, if you get into contact with those, well, boom, you're dead, so... Uh, Jungle Hunt. Um, a very cool version of this game. Uh, tough as nails. I, uh, <laughs> um, you, sh you really should play it a lot. Every 8-bit every game system probably has, has a version out there. And they, they do play differently. Uh, timing is different, but this one is, uh, is pretty cool. Uh, from what I understood, actually this was supposed to be a Tarzan game, but because of licensing problems they, uh, they had to outfit him with a little uh, tropical outfit, so it's not Tarzan, but uh, some sort of geezer uh, trying to, uh, to rescue his uh, girlfriend. And this is a great game on the Commodore 64, and uh, I didn't know it was out there for the Atari 8-bit, but this version is not as good. And I suck at it, so... Okay, this is Mark signing off, and I'll be back with another video soon. <laughs>